Hi guys, this video is a review of Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, which has just been shortlisted for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction, and it was also longlisted for the Man Booker Prize last year. And I've heard it around quite a lot over the last year or so, but for some reason it had never been really a priority for me to read until it was shortlisted and I thought I would give it a go, and it really surpassed my expectations. I enjoyed it a lot and there's quite a lot I want to talk about in regards to this book. It's about three British siblings of Pakistani origin, an older sister Isma and her two younger twin siblings uh, Anika and Parvez. And the chapters alternate perspectives between these three characters and also several others. And I think in the broadest terms this book is about these characters trying to negotiate the conflicts between family obligations and their religion in the 21st century specifically focusing on issues of terrorism and attitudes towards that in Britain in this present day. The older sibling, Isma, has just moved to the US to study and the book opens with her experiences being detained in the immigration control in the airport and being subjected to ridiculous questions about her allegiance to the UK through her views of the Queen and the Great British Bake Off, which I think sets the tone for this book really well. And her um, younger brother, Parvez, has recently moved to Syria uh, after being supposedly radicalised and is following in his father's footsteps who um, became a jihadist and was murdered uh, when they were all very young. Another character who's important in this book is Ayman, another British Pakistani man whose father has just become the first Pakistani Home Secretary of the UK, which was interesting because as I was reading this book just the previous week the UK did in fact gain its first Pakistani Home Secretary who, like the character in this book, is a non-practicing Muslim and a conservative. The character in this book is really divisive because he has imposed very tough sanctions on people like Parvez who um, become radicalised and move uh, to countries like Syria and he proposes to strip them of their British citizenship and he also has very controversial views about um, what Muslim women should wear and is um, condemning of the hijab. It remains to be seen what the legacy of um, our current Home Secretary will be and I'm not suggesting it will be in any way akin to the character in this book but I think it is telling that um, the current Home Secretary has been instated as a result of the resignation of Amber Rudd who was kind of forced to resign because of a scandal about uh, migration and clearly the issues of immigration and um, terrorism and national security are very high on the agenda right now so um, it certainly mirrors in some ways what is happening in this book. Everything in this book felt very topical. It's dealing with big issues like terrorism and Islamophobia, but it does so really sensitively and with nuance as well. I think that's something that the British media fails to do sometimes. It often, because of a lack of time and resources, I suppose, or maybe because of bias, um, reports on issues like terrorism in a very black and white way, um, not making much distinction or nuance between what does and does not con constitute terrorism. This book tells from the perspective of Parvez how a young man like him can be radicalised and move to somewhere like Syria for a cause that is as malevolent as terrorism. And I don't want to spoil any of the details of the plot, but as you can imagine it is a lot more complex than he simply becomes a terrorist and goes to Syria to be a terrorist. I think the book has shown that a lot more compassion is needed in this issue and to try and understand the root cause of the problems rather than just trying to stamp it out when it comes to the surface. There is a UK um, government um, scheme called Prevent which aims to do this exactly. It aims to um, stop uh, young men, mostly, uh, becoming radicalised in this way, although it doesn't seem to be really succeeding in getting to the root of the problem or into the communities where it is a big issue. Another thing that I think this book tackles really well is the way the government and the general public um, treat the families of those who become radicalised. I think it's really calling for a lot more compassion when it comes to the family members and how they are treated um, because of course they cannot be held accountable in any way for the actions of another even if they are related and um, of course the, the family members can still love and care about this person even if they condemn his actions. This book is quite a difficult and uncomfortable read, I think, because it forces us to confront some of the prejudices that the UK government holds and also just the general public in the way we view Islam overall. I think it does a good job at not only dealing with issues surrounding terrorism but making these characters fully rounded humans. They're not only a product of their religion or the colour of their skin. 
Um, this book talks about a variety of topics, um, including how women are treated and education and different types of love, both romantic and familial. Uh, and I think Shamsi does it all very competently. This isn't to me a literary novel in the sense that I don't think Shamsi is trying to do anything particularly innovative with her style in this book. There's no what I would call extraordinary writing here and so in some ways it might be less memorable than some of the others in the Women's Prize shortlist. The other one I'm thinking particularly of is Sight. However, it is very focused on exploring its themes comprehensively and characterisation within the book. And I think that uh, writing in quite straightforward English is the best way to do this. And I don't want to do a disservice to the prose because it is very tight, it moves you through the plot um, at a very good pace, but it's never a distraction from what's going on. It is worth saying that this novel is a retelling of Sophocles' play Antigone, which um, I can't really say a great deal about because I haven't read that and I wasn't hugely familiar with it before going into this book and I kind of actively chose not to learn too much about it in case it somehow overlapped with the plot too much. I think if you know the story of Antigone you will understand some of the wider plot points that happen within the book but I think that overall Shamsi is trying to convey the universality of issues like family and betrayal. I did feel that, although I don't know the source text Antigone well at all, that the fact it is a reimagining of a play did cause some restrictions to the plot and towards the end I did feel like it got a little bit over melodramatic. An issue that I had with the changing perspectives through the book is that some characters' voices get lost once their part is over. Specifically, I mean Isma, the older sister, uh, her part is right at the beginning and I felt that her voice got a little bit lost as we went through the book, so that's probably the biggest criticism I would give of it. I've read three of the shortlisted books so far for the Women's Prize, Sight, The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock and this one, and I would say that for me The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock was the most enjoyable to read, Sight was the most impressive and this one was the most thought-provoking. It's really hard to compare them because they're such vastly different books, but if I was to be a judge I would say that maybe The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock has less of a chance because it's not as serious as some of the others. I would also say that Sight is maybe too niche, it's quite strange prose, it's quite academic. Um, so I, I think that actually of the three I've read this one probably has more of a chance because it is more accessible but also very topical. If the judges are looking for a book that is talking about 21st century society and really dealing with difficult topics head on, then I think this surely is the winner. But I'm really interested to um, compare this one to the other three once I've read them, which I'm hoping to do very soon. So I'll definitely be putting up more videos of the other three books once I have read them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think of this book if you've read it. I've heard almost universal praise of it, so especially if you didn't like it, please let me know why. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye-bye.